Buy some gym. Stick around. We got lots to talk about. Hi, I'm Jess. And I'm Jim. Uh, we come here today, another day for a little bit of music. That's right. And some word. I got a word today. Oh, we yeah. got a word today from the Lord. Yes. All right. I, I believe. Can't wait. Well, it's His word. You know. That's right. It's His Bible, so He kind of gives you a place to read, and so that come from Him. He give it to us though. Oh gift. yeah. Words you give All of it. Yeah, that's to right. us. All of us. That's right. So, but I thought we'd talk about this pandemic. Plan what? Plan-demic. Plan you mean a pandemic? That movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. They're taking it down everywhere. Dr. Judy, Micah, Vitz, <laughs> Vic. And what's that all about? Well. The, I just, the censoring. Yeah, I know. It seems like, uh, I thought we was a free society, uh, freedom of the press and all that, and freedom of thought and all that, you know, differing views could, you know, could um, stand and people would, you know, look at one side and look at the other and make a decision on their own, yeah. you know. But yeah. I think they're scared that we're that we can't make we're good smarter decisions. smarter than I think we are. We can't make good decisions <laughs> on our own, so they're having to protect us <laughs> from our own selves. Oh my lord! I think that's what it is, honey. Oh, I don't know. Or we might just un might just turn that table. Maybe anyway, that's what it is. So one way or the other. We still just, uh, we know there's a killer disease out here, and um, just everybody be careful and watch out for the elderly and them that are sick, and if you get it, we're, 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 we feel for you, and um, we just hope God bless you and you get over it with no, uh, with no adverse effects, and you get right through it and, and move on. and, and it's run its course, though, in a lot of ways. I hope so. I think it has. I think we, we do have a herd immunity. and oh, uh, a lot of people staying home, keeping out of the herd. Yeah. So. And that, that may not be the smartest thing. No. Uh, you know, that may not have been our best idea. Right. That's the controversy. So, yeah, I know it is. I know it is. And, and, uh, and there's people on this, so, but we're praying. Good people on both sides of the issue. We'd love y'all. <sighs> yeah. We're praying, we're hoping for the best result in all this, but certainly freedom of speech, that, I mean, that chaps my hide. Yeah, it's a, more, more it's a As much as, I mean, just like, really, come on. We sh that's the thing that, that's really upsetting. So, I mean, at least, at least here in America, we can still worship the Lord, we can still read His Word, we can still speak His name. I mean, in some places you can't do that. Well, let's uh, not let uh, let's not be um, too um, lax because uh, they that might uh, come into play before too long too. They might try to might try take that away from us also. Might try, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think America has the hand of God on it, and um, and we're gonna do great exploits for the Lord. So, but we'll see. You know, certainly uh, don't want to spend my time worrying too much. No. But <clears throat> I can't believe that we have so much censorship. I know. <laughs> in, the, in America, land That's of the right. free, home of the brave. Right. Wow. Okay, so well today, I, we've got a word, but I, you know, I, I come up kind of with the plan. Jim knows what's, what's going on. So, what? yeah. Do I? I told you. <laughs> I read it all to you, didn't I? The other day. Anyways, so I think it's a good word, um, but it's it might be kind of long, and so I'm not sure how we're going to work this out. Maybe we'll make them short and do two parts, or maybe we'll get through it quick. I don't know, but Jim, it's got a few songs. But not a few. Huh? Not a few? You got one? What you got? You got a song anyways? Well, sure. Okay. I keep worrying about my hair. I'm not as young as I used to be. Oh, you Anyways, do. I don't want bloopers on here all the time <laughs> to be so silly, but that's okay because I don't want to edit either. And so it just is going to be what it is. So I just want to bring out the word. I just feel like, that, hey, it's good for people to know us a little bit. You know, I just want to bring out the word and get a few songs out here. 
and we want to go live eventually and we'll be able to cut out bloopers so trying to ease into this right now I could cut them out if I had to so I might cut that out but anyway so I really uh, was reading the other day and I felt like this was just a great place to go for today and it kind of goes along with the spirit of the world and um, and what we're seeing today in the world so Ephesians 2 is where I was going to read and this is the Apostle Paul talking to the Ephesians of course it's inspired by the Spirit of the Lord and uh, its title above the chapter is made alive in Christ but there's so much more in here but I mean that's definitely the cornerstone made alive in Christ right honey that's a good thing that's a good thing okay that's the only so, way you can be alive, because uh, without Christ, you're dead in your trespasses and sins. That's right. That's the Bible says. That's right. So this is this is to believers, those that have already accepted Christ. So you have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. That Jesus is Lord. your mouth, with your mouth. Right. <laughs> no, believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, God raised from the dead. That's right. And you shall be saved. And that's not saying that there's not more to it. It's just that the Holy Spirit and the Lord, He will help and and uh, and work with you. I mean, you have to want to work with God in order to see that salvation for yourself. But it's it really is that first step. That's that first step to really accept the cross, accept what Jesus did on the cross. So, anyways, made alive in Christ. My hair. Okay. And you, me, you... But, and you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Right. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging in the desires of of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of the wrath even as the rest children of wrath even as the rest what do you mean uh, by uh, <laughs> children of the flesh just that uh, you just do whatever seems right whatever feels good whatever well yeah. there's a whole list you know of um the things of the flesh, so and uh, pride of life, the you know the indulging of the lusts of the flesh, the pride of life, and and the sinful nature to do evil and wicked against others. I mean, there's ten commandments all over the thing. To a whole book, <laughs> right. and the whole book explains to us what the sin is. But the lust of the flesh is pretty much the natural man. Right. Right. Because when we come to Christ, then says, what we're doing is the spirit. The spirit is is more of a deeper thing, right? A different, uh, deeper, sure, deep into God, deep into Christ. Because you can have you can have a whole situation where you are spirit into the air, which we just learned about. It was um, the prince. You know, according to the prince and the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. So there is a spiritual force of, of darkness. There's a spiritual force for sure. But I mean, we all have a spirit. Yeah. As well as flesh. Well, we do. We have, well, yeah, we well, yeah, have flesh, mind, spirit. We are um, like triune, they say. You know, we have three parts to ourselves. But when we get when we get when we become when we come into Christ, we are we give ourselves completely to Him, and really, you know, we're supposed to give ourselves completely. But what He saves is our soul, you know. And people would say that was your mind, you know. And so, and He transforms our mind, and so we take His spirit. So it's as if we kill our spirit. I mean, we just decide that. We don't, we, we are now in Christ, so it's a little different, you know. I can't explain it all. It's, it's huge. 
you know. But we know that we um, become a new man in Christ, and that's what this scripture is talking about. This whole section is talking about is becoming a new Christ, a new man in Christ. But it was the two becoming one in Christ. So that's what I thought it was so wonderful for today. So <clears throat> we we learned that uh, you were dead in your trespasses and sins. We, of course. Um, in which you formerly, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, you know, the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. So in disobedience, yeah, you, you're, you, I mean, you think all kinds of things that just aren't healthy for anybody. And people go into really wicked areas because they really don't know to control their mind. And, and they don't even know that they are under the influence of the prince of the power of the air. But in Christ, see, you come to know these things. And among them, we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging, so there you go, what does it mean? Indulging in the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. Right. You know, people don't want to talk about that. I understand, you know, we're all trying to seek salvation for ourselves. And um, a lot of times we want to just not talk about some things because it's difficult. I, I get that. But you can't change what God said. He Children said it. Children of wrath, that means... He uh, said it. Wrath, doesn't that mean like uh, when somebody gets mad, that's when their wrath gets up? Yes. Yeah, it's some kind, of a, some kind of a punishment or something, right? Yeah, it's angry, right? right. So, yeah. Children of wrath, even as the rest. So, you know, they're, God's going to pour out his wrath someday. He doesn't right now. He's not right now, though. People like to think he is. They're always pointing fingers, saying, that's God's wrath, that's God's wrath, that's God's wrath. It's not what I read. That's not what I read. I read that we are living in the age of grace. <laughs> We're so blessed to be in the age of grace. That we can come boldly into the throne room of God and make Even our requests known. if we don't read known. it, I know it. Cause yeah. Because if it, we was living in the age of wrath, I'd have been toasted a long time ago. Well, yeah, because we've all sinned. It's just, it, what's important is to have a repentant heart. So, that, and that is just always, just never stop talking to God. So, you know, that's kind of what we've been talking about. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Never stop talking to God. Don't give up. If you got issues and hurts and habits and hang-ups and, and all and anything, just don't stop talking to God. So he, because that's what he says, is come as you are. Come as you are. So if we're going to talk about salvation, God is just, he's just welcoming everybody. You are invited. You are invited. Come as you are. And, um, and take upon me my, take upon yourself my peace. Isn't that, isn't that what he says, honey? Yeah. Something like that. Take upon my yoke, my burdens light, but that I'll give you peace such as the world cannot give you. See, I'm remembering a little bit of this stuff. <laughs> okay, anyway, so. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together mm -hmm. with Christ. By grace you have been saved. So there, there's just evidence that it's come as you are. Grace People is, can't change first before they come to God. When you get grace, that's like you get something you didn't deserve, right? Yes, it is. Right. Yeah. And, okay. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In order that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness towards us. In Christ Jesus. Yeah, the ages to come, he'd be like, look at this. <laughs> look what save, I did. Save that bunch of knuckleheads. <laughs> yeah. You know why? Just because that's just the kind of person yeah. I am. <laughs> right? Because I love them even. Oh, praise I love Jesus. Them anyway. Oh, yeah, no doubt. They, they, will, they was willing to come and, and, and come to me and, and say, ask forgiveness, and I was like, that's right, you just come on. Yep, yep, and yep, yep. He said, our God is good. I'm glad we got a good God. Yes, yes, and amen. Okay. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. <laughs> it is the gift of God. So not by yourself. It says not as a result of works. Lest, well, that's not this 
translation. Lest any man should boast was, is, I think, the King, King James. But this is not as a result of works that no one should boast. Right. So, really, we were, we were all pretty dead in sin. Regardless, if we grew up in the church or every man was a sinful creature and we come in Christ. And that's Jewish. And that's, that's Gentiles. That's Jews. That's Greeks. That's everybody. Everybody was sinners. Sinners, right? Even Greek? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I think it's I in know, here. I know. Yeah, it's in here in the That's scripture. That's from the old days. Yeah, <laughs> everybody was. Everybody, Greek was a big, big culture in the old days. Well, it's a scripture. I know. But anyways, but yeah, but all every person. Right. <laughs> every person. Nowadays, anyways, you might say whether you're Russian or Chinese or American or African or. Mexican. We may not get through this fast at all. That's right. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Okay, so, anyways, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Right on. Yeah, God's I mean, got a plan for us. If you think about it, before you and I were even born, the internet was not. And here we are. Well, it was not, you know. It wasn't even created yet. Al Gore hadn't got to it yet. <laughs> if Al Gore did it, I don't know if I believe that. But. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Shoot. So I heard the internet. It has he to be true. He the internet. Yeah. 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 Oh, I don't know. But anyways, yeah. So when you think about it, though, I mean, I've really felt a pull into my spirit to do this, it's been a lot of fun for us. We love the Word of God. We love music. We like to share. We hope to... To get something going here, and we I'm have other fooling. ideas. I'm just fooling But the internet was not even <laughs> created. It wasn't right. even begun when we were born. Right. You know, when you're eight years older than me, but even, you know, like when I was born, I, there wasn't an internet. So, I mean, our rabbit ears on our TVs, people don't even know about those. Some of the younger people wouldn't even know about rabbit ears I don't know, on a TV, I don't you know. Think President Eisenhower and, had no internet back in them days when I was born. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Appreciate your input there, Jim. <laughs> All right, so, anyways, so, anyways, God has a plan and prepares beforehand that we should walk in them. That's what it is. And so, and I think that's kind of cool. He knows ahead of time what's coming. Yeah. You know, I mean, and I think about it when I was like in my 20s. I was working with computers. I know. It. You remember? I yeah, because you used to come to the computer or to the advertising company where I worked. Mm -hmm. I was in a huge computer room and the computers were huge. And It was a big old glass and room. Just, it was climate controlled and dust free and all yeah, that. Yeah, and I've stuff. always had computers, right? I mean, yeah, not you had that. computers when nobody had a computer. Not that I'm savvy at this point. All the young people are so much more savvy than She's me. She's like but, our grandson. But we can do this Clayton, because I've. Got, uh, he's got a bunch of stuff all put together <laughs> to make it a little computer yeah. thing and a screen that's hooked up to some wire to thumb and other things. <laughs> she used to have these, she'd have a thing here. And a thing there and a keyboard over here and she'd rig her up computers from way back. Yeah, so, and I built them, sold them, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah she did. Alright, so anyways, uh, that was back when that was a money maker. You know, a little bit of money there in that. But nonetheless, okay, so God knows what we're doing and he sets a plan and he wants us to walk in it. And so, just like I said, Jim and I are having a little bit of fun at this, so there's joy in that. There's that Funny word, joy. Joy? What you talking about, Grandma? <laughs> what you talking about, Grandma? <laughs> yeah. There's some joy. I am a grandma. Matter of fact, this ring says Nana. I'm a Nana. I am. The four grandkids and two step granddaughters. What you know? Okay. Anyways, um, let's see. Um, therefore, remember that formerly you, the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands. What the heck are you Remember, about? I know, I'm going to come back. Hang on. What? Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers of the covenant of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who, were f who formerly were far off have been brought near 
by the blood of Christ. And so, in Christ, we're all the circumcised, right? Because we are to expose our heart to the Lord. And, and uh, anyways, we're saved and we have a relationship with the Lord. So, anyways, but that's not really what this is about. But it is about the Jews and the Gentiles. And so, you know, we start in the beginning. But that's and said, how he di differentiated them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that's... We have... We have exposed our heart to the Lord and allowed Him to come in so that His love can come in. And hopefully that love shines out. And that's, that's like the effort. That's what we're working towards. Building up to be the new man in Christ. And that's what this Ephesians 2 is really talking about because it's talking about um, how there was a time the Jews, uh, I don't want to say that, the Jews were called out to be, to carry the oracles of God and they suffered greatly for it, they really did, but they also are not the whole story. They're not the whole story. But yeah, they're not to be excluded from the story. And and I think God God makes that, that aware just by reading Ephesians 2, if you allow him to speak to you. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were formerly far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. So all the By, promises that they that God promised to to um, Israel um, are available to the um, people who um, who aren't part of the Jewish um, faith or lineage or whatever. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Tradition. All the promises of God are yes and amen. <laughs> yes, and and actually, the truth is, is we don't even know who's Jewish anymore. I mean, there's some that really know. I mean, they've kept that whole thing. But there's a lot of, there was a, you know, we just don't know. We just don't know. There's a lot of. Um, there's been, there was the diaspora or whatever you call it, where they were, you know, 2,000 years. They've been scattered all over the world. Yeah. And uh, even longer than that, even back, you know, um, during Babylonian yeah. times, I mean, the. The northern kingdom was all hauled off and everything, and yeah. they've gone out of the world and mingled and spread out throughout everywhere. And yeah. So, you know, God knows. God's got... During the God days of Hitler. Who's, who's who. During the days of Hitler. They come to America. Yeah, and some people... The persecution. Yeah. They come to America. So, and, and a lot of, and you know, it's the stories is that they just didn't hold to that faith. They didn't hold to that tradition. In order to have a new life, um, that was their choice. But nonetheless, we don't know. We don't know who's Jew. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, some do. Some have searched out their gen their genealogy. Right. But really, the Lord says, don't do that. Why? He said, why? Why search out endless genealogy? Because it's not very important. And I think if I searched out mine, I think there would be some sort of, of bloodline in there. We came from Europe, and it, clear in the... You know, but I, but the, I don't see any point because I'm just having so much fun in Christ, and um, and I'm I'm just a sinner. <laughs> but I, I know they were persecuted <laughs> and hounded so much because you, you know um, yeah. that uh, I mean to maybe just to save your own life and to be able to live, you might even just say, oh no, I ain't one of them. You know, I'm the right, you know. right, and and now you're persecuted you. in Christ. So, I mean, right. there's plenty of persecution going around. God's people always get, so. get persecuted by the devil. And Hated for out with no reason. <laughs> they just disliked me up in that place. They got a, they got a reason. <laughs> well, uh, they don't even know it, I don't think. Okay, anyways. By abolishing in his flesh the anemnity. Very good. That's it, all right? Okay, which is the law of commandments contained ordinances that in himself he might make the two into one new man thus establishing peace it, it, did that make that's sense like a, that's like a, a divide like a, a feud mm -hmm. 
which is the law of commandments. Right. So, that's what it says, which is the law of commandments, contained ordinances, that in himself he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace. So, that's like the crux of the situation. You know, the law and, um, and, and now the grace in Christ. So, it's, it all came together at the cross. So, anyways, let me read on. Let me finish this. Jesus said, whosoever will. It wasn't, he kind of opened the gates up for everybody. Yes, he did. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Thus, establishing peace and might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross by it having put to death the enmity. <laughs> and he came and preached peace to you who were far, far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have our access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household having been built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself became the, the chief cornerstone, or the cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you, are, you also are being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit. So, I thought that was really good because it's really, it's really bringing together the whole situation and saying whether, you know, that in Christ, it's, it's, it's about the whole, it's about the new man. One new man. But it all builds on, uh, builds on the, the, the foundation of the apostles and the, and, and the prophets, the prophets and, and, uh, and. Abraham and all everybody that came before with Christ at the center. Yes. And, um, you know, and, uh, and it, it helps, not helps, but it brings about the fact that God can live in us. You know, like it says, building a building for a temple for God, uh, you know. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. But, you know, we really do find that there is a natural-minded man in every, um, every race, every group of people, there's natural-mindedness, you know. Sure. And so it wasn't different with the Jews. No. There was natural-mindedness there. And Jesus, Jesus called it out all the time. He well, talked to them. Yeah. But, you know, who his disciples were were Jews, too. Right. So it's important to understand that he did, he's not distinguishing between uh, Jewish and, and Gentile anymore. He's saying, you're mine. You know, you're, you're mine. You're, you're a child of God. He robes us in righteousness, whether Jewish or Gentile, and in the new man, in Christ Jesus. We're all equal. There's an equality in God. There's an equality in Christ when he abolished, when he abolished by fulfillment the law, the Jews weren't necessarily the central figure anymore. Jesus was. They didn't even recognize him. So killing Jesus is what I was going to call this. Because look at this. In John 8, 44, this is a situation where... Jesus is talking to his disciples, but also he's in the temple. He had just um, been teaching them, and the, the Pharisees bring in the adulterous woman. And they want, they want Jesus to condemn her to death, right? Condemn her to death. And he's come to save the world. And he's like, okay, the first one here, you know, go ahead and kill her. The first one that don't sin here. 
He's talking to the Pharisees. These are these people that really thought that they knew what they were doing. They were all in charge of everything. They 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 had built a, a great system, they thought, and everything else. And Jesus came, and he really messed up their worldly view. He messed up their worldly view. Because they, they, they walked out. They just turned tail and ran and then walked, you know. And then so Jesus goes back to teach on, teach in the temple. And they come back. And they're giving him trouble the whole time, you know. And, and, he, and, and, uh, and, and Jesus is talking about the truth will make you free, okay. So then John 8, around 31 is where I'm looking. And the truth will make you free, he says. And, the, and those Pharisees are like, what are you saying? We're children of Abraham. You know, we don't need we don't need this freedom you talk about. Who, who could be more free than us? You know, so they had issues, right? They, yeah, that that no that's the point. They have issues. Nobody ever thought they didn't. Well, some do, and that's what I'm getting at. So we need to have an understanding that they were just human, so that they didn't they weren't no more supernatural. It was God that came upon them to give us the word. And and we certainly had mighty prophets, and but we still we have today. I'm just saying, you know, they we can be equalized. We equalized is what it is, is what I'm talking about. So, anyways, they were saying, you know, uh, we're Abraham's children. Abraham's children. He was like, well, if you were Abraham's children, you'd do the deeds of Abraham. You know. So I mean, he put him down. I mean, he's like, you know, you you talk a good a big talk, but you can't. You couldn't do it, you know. You couldn't do it. And and even right here in 44, now this is where people take, and they mix this up to say that the Jews are out. But they're not out. They're like every man. They're like every man. Come as you are. So, but anyway, so I'm talking about anti-Semitism. Okay? You are of your father, the devil. So Jesus says that to them, to the Pharisees. Now, why did he say that to them? You know? Why did he say that to them? That's, the, I mean, that was what I was getting at. So, Jesus, over here in Ephesians, he says, I'm making everybody one. I'm bringing it together. One strong man. Right? And then, and then it, but, you know, in John, of course, he's, uh, he's telling them, you know, get behind me. You're of your father, the devil. Right, because they were lying and murderous and had murderous thoughts and they were lying and cheating yeah. and carrying on. So they and had uh, natural mindedness. <laughs> okay, we're going to finish up here with a song and our uh, teaching of Killing Jesus is going to be in two parts. So, come watch that second part. It'll be out in a few days. Right on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful Father, your wonderful love, sent down from heaven in Jesus your Son, keeps us from falling. And the death's evil grip. And now your precious Lord will ever be on my lips. Praise you for loving me like you do. Your goodness and
Jesus, your Son, keeps us from falling in the dancing of grace. And now your grace is Lord, forever beyond.